Saddle sores, we have all had them. And if you haven't had them, I'd suggest you do a Google search, do a Google images search, just make sure you don't do it in a professional workplace. But once you've had one, you certainly don't want another. So what I'm gonna to do today is give you my top five tips to avoid saddle sores. And my first tip is an exfoliating glove. That's right, an exfoliating glove. Let me explain. So I'm talking about one of those loafer gloves that people use to sort of exfoliate their skin and, you know, regentrify and all. That's the wrong word, but you know what I mean. If you don't know what I mean, go into a chemist and you can get one. This trick was told to us by a Spanish writer when we were at the Tour of the Philippines. And he basically told us that, look, the washing and everything on this tour is going to be really hard. Your kit isn't going to be that clean. So you've got to make sure you are as clean as possible. And one particular area has to be super, super clean. It's a pretty simple procedure. It's you use the glove in the area where the saddle sore could come about, you clean that particular area. Now this is a very important point. This is how to avoid getting saddle sores prior to them occurring. Do not use the exfoliating glove situation once you have a saddle sore, that's just gonna be more sore. So this is, after all, this is about maintenance. This is maintaining the region to ensure no saddle sores. So tip one, exfoliating glove. Tip number two, an antibacterial laundry sanitizer. Now, this one was accidentally shown to us by Sunweb at Suntour a couple of years ago. Kelly, who was helping us out at the time, was down in the laundry area, he was doing our laundry, and he noticed that they were putting in some sort of liquid into the fabric softener part of the wash. Now this is the key point. This is an additional item that goes in the wash with your gear. So you use your normal detergent in the, the normal detergent slot, but you also put a cap full of this into where a fabric softener would go. The theory here is it kills the bacteria that causes saddle sores essentially in your chamois. So tip number two is an antibacterial laundry sanitizer. Tip number three, and this is an equipment tip, avoid large chamois or shorts that are too big. Look, a big cause of saddle sores are friction. Friction are things rubbing. You might think that a large chamois is just a big pillow to sit on, but it's actually just increasing the chances of stuff rubbing. And that's why I also mentioned large shorts. Your chances of the fabrics being too large and rubbing against things that is the cause of your saddle sores. Now, obviously I would always say get shorts that fit you perfectly, but if you are in doubt, try and aim towards stuff that's a little bit smaller, a little bit more compressed on you, because if it's more compressed, it's tighter against the skin and there is less chance of that fabric rubbing on your skin and causing the saddle sores. So tip number three, avoid large chamois or oversized shorts. What's next? What's next? What's next? Ah, tip four. So individually bag your lycra if you are washing it with other lycra and use a color catcher. Now bagging your items isn't essential if you're at home and you're just washing your own kit because the point of that is to avoid cross contamination. We've learned that one on tours that if someone picks up a saddle saw, it can easily be transferred to other people in the team by the wash. So ideally keeping the items separate in the bag can help that. Using the antibacterial is the other big part of that. But if you're just doing the stuff at home, bagging is not as important. Now the reason the color catcher plays a big role is it's another way of stopping things migrating. It stops osmosis and it's also a really good way of keeping the colors in your lycra, which is just as important, I might add. So tip number four is individually bag your items and use a color catcher. Before we crack on with the next one, guys, if you are enjoying this video and if you're enjoying the daily vlogs, please hit the thumbs up on this video, get this video going out there and subscribe to the channel with the notification bell. Makes a big, big difference to the team. 
Tip number five, use a chamois cream. Now, there are lots of brands out there. They all work really well. I have a personal admission to make. The last lockdown that we had in 2020, when we were down in Berry and we were kind of stuck there for two months, I didn't have any chamois cream, nor did I have any access to any chamois cream. We had Vaseline. I rode borderline every day down there in some really hot and hard conditions and the Vaseline worked fine. Feel free to let me know down below if you've had any other experiences with chamois creams that aren't chamois creams, if you know what I mean. But I still think the importance of the chamois cream plays a big role, especially, especially if you are riding back to back to back days. So tip number five, use a chamois cream, but sometimes it doesn't actually have to be a chamois cream. I've got another one, actually. While I sit here, I have a sixth tip, a bonus tip. We have a bonus chamois cream tip. The last saddle saw that I got, I discovered was because my saddle, the physical saddle had gone crooked. It was really simple. Basically the saddle had tilted to one side and I'd ride, rode for a couple of days and discovered that, well, the side that was a bit higher, I'd suddenly got really sore. So tip number six, the bonus tip is check the level of your saddle, which you can do on your phone now. They've all got those sort of nice little levelers. Check it out and see if it's level. So there you have it, guys. There are your six, your six tips to avoiding saddle sores. Hey, Catherine, yeah. where's Kira going today? School. Kira, where are you going today? Stop! <laughs> So obviously a massive day in the uh, Miller household, actually. Yeah, so momentous day. Kira was very nervous this morning. So quick shout to Dylan. Dylan just put a video up on his new bike. I'll link it below. He is the third rider running the FSA group set. So there's three of us trialing it, myself, Leo and, and Dylan. So check him out. He's also big into the Zwift finals. Uh, I chatted to Jay yesterday. He was just telling me actually that if any of the guys make the Zwift finals, they'll be over in Spain for the finals. So that would be, how would that collab be? Maybe I should go. What do you think? Anyway, keep the questions coming, loving the ideas for the daily stuff, getting into it. And uh, yeah, so catch you all super soon. Subscribe, like, share.